Celtics trying to uh, see if he can become an outfielder. Les and Paul Sippany, what's up, Les? Les, what's happening? What's up, Mike? What's going on? You think if LeBron gets eliminated early this season, does it affect his legacy at all? I mean, in well, my mind, it's already I felt like it, he, it's already not early anymore. There's only one series left after the series. Yeah, so if he gets eliminated against Boston, like, does it affect his legacy? Or, I mean, he's not going to do too well in the finals if he does make it anyway because of Golden State. Well, how, or, what, what would what would what would it mean if he lost the series? How, how would that? Do you think it would affect his legacy? No, in my opinion, oh, I, don't I think, think it's, it's even solidified. I, I don't think there's anything to even discuss. I think it's almost silly to even discuss it. The man's been to the finals eight straight years. You know, I don't know what else you want him to do. Jay in East Brunswick, what's up, Jay? Hey, Mike, how are you? Good, what's happening? Well, you are the voice of reason all day long, from morning until you get on the air. Every single host is a Met fan, and I listen to them cry all day long. What are they crying about? The latest thing that we're listening to, and I'd like your opinion on this. They're all, they all seem to be pushing DeGrom going to the Yankees for some ridiculous package, which always starts off with uh, Torres. Well, first of and all, Torres is not going. I mean, Torres. He's, and Torres is not going to the Yankees. And Torres isn't going anywhere, first of all. He's untouchable. Secondly, the odds on them making a trade is so is so small. Uh, it's just, it's almost a non-starter. They don't like each other, even a little. And the idea of having someone do very well once you trade them to the other team and having them stay in the face for years to come is not pleasing to either one of them. So I don't even see it getting started. I think that they would exhaust every other option before they would ever decide to make a trade. Uh, it will not happen. I, I, I shouldn't say it won't happen because you never know. Things sometimes happen out of nowhere, but that would be stunning a stunning development. It really would. Uh, Stephen Hoboken, what's up, Steve? Hey, Mike, how you doing? Good, what's happening? Hey, not much. Uh, I just want to say welcome back, and I'm glad you're on Twitter. It's good to see. Um, but I just wanted to uh, make a, um, you know, just give my opinion on the, the Greg Bird, Tyler Rawson debate. Um, what's the debate? I don't, well, I mean, everyone seems like they just want to get Bird in there, and they don't really want to give uh, Austin the opportunity. When Bird comes back, they want to send him down, maybe get rid of him. And I know Bird's got a you know an elite glove at first. Um, but, I mean, I've watched every Yankee game this year. Mm-hmm. Austin has made some tremendous improvements over there at first. He has, he has one error in 57 games in three years. He's played with the Yankees over at first base. Not a good fielder. Pretty, What's that? Not a good fielder. Uh, I don't know. He's made some impression. I mean, he's not as good as Bird for sure, but, uh, I mean, he's got more pop than Bird. He's not as much of an injury no, risk. No, no, you don't no, think no. so? He doesn't have more pop, no. There's not a I mean, he has eight, eight home runs already. I mean, yeah, I Bird had that. nine in 46 games last year. He batted 188. Listen, Bird is a much bigger prospect than Austin. Is Austin's a good stick? He's a good, he's going to be a solid stick. I, I don't think he's a. Uh, I don't. I, I think he could be an everyday player on the right team. I do think so. I don't think he's in Bird's classes as a player. Um, I think he's got power. I don't think there's any question about it. But I, like I said, I think Bird has a chance now. Bird's got to prove that he can stay healthy. Uh, but the Yankees have very, very high hopes for Bird, as you know. And I just think now they can reach a point where they, you know, Bird can be, you know, it's a, it's a de- it becomes a dead issue because he just can't stay healthy. I mean, uh, he has got to prove that he has some durability in him. I mean, it's now it's been three injuries now. In, right. in you know it, it, one right after another after another after another it gets a little ridiculous so I do agree with that but I think we we all know how hard the Yankees you know how mu- how highly they think of him and that's not to knock Austin I think Austin has trade value because he's got power he's got punch I think he can play a, on 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 teams it's unfortunate that he has to go back to the minor leagues now but they have no room for him I mean if when Bird comes back he's got to leave there's there's no way around it. I would say keep him in the minors, though, and not trade him because well, if wait, Bird listen, does go got, down, you could call him back. Well, up. yes, but you you'd only trade him if you were going to improve the team a lot by getting a big pitcher. If he's the guy that stands between, right. you know, and maybe he's not, but if he's the guy that stands between making a trade and not making a trade, then you make a trade. But yes, he does give you an insurance policy, you know, at first base. I totally agree. He absolutely does. 
Uh, but he's going to wind up with his eight home runs and 23 or four RBIs, whatever he's got. He's going to wind up back in the minors pretty soon. You know? Joe in uh, Bloomfield. What's up, Joe? Oh, Mike, thank you for taking my call. Yeah, what's happening? Um, as you know, before I get to my question, I'm always, you know, proud of the Lenovo alum. And when they won the title this year, something was missing for me. I didn't get my Jay Wright interview on Mike. Lo and behold, you had him on your first show. I just wanted to thank you for having him on your first show. Well, that's an easy one, getting him on. But that, thank you. Well, you made me very happy. Getting to my point, following up with the caller just said regarding the whole Bird Tyler Austin situation. Yeah. You know, I, I understand, Mike, what you're saying and all, but the whole situation, it just. It's it sour with me. I mean, here you got Austin, mm-hmm. who's done everything you've asked him to do with this position while Bird's been out. And I'm, I'm just not understanding this loyalty the Yankees have in giving this Bird this position yet again. You know, when Teixeira was getting injured, it kind of made sense because of the enormous salary. What were you going to do? You were stuck with him. It's not quite the same situation with Bird, and I just don't understand why the Yankees are just handing the position back to him again after you get another injury. Well, I, th- I think the reason why is because they consider Bird to be a very, very top prospect. They consider Bird to have a chance to be a, a very, very good player. And I think they're right. I think he can be. I think he can be a premier left-handed power hitter if he can stay healthy. And he's left-handed, which is something you prize at Yankee Stadium. He's a guy who is a good first baseman. Uh... Austin is a guy who, let's be honest, is a, he's got more of a reputation for being a jack of all trades than he does a guy who has a position. And, you know, he hadn't had a lot of at bats before this year. He had shown fairly well. I mean, you know, his first year he had five home runs and, and, you know, in limited time. And then last year he had a couple of home runs. He only got up like 40 times last year. Uh, but, and this year he's done a good job in his hundred at bats or so. He's got his eight home runs and 24. Now he, it's funny when he got hot here this last uh, go round here, the last couple of days. Before that, he had gone into a terrible slump. I mean, he had he been did. 0 for 22 with 14 strikeouts for the season, you know. This guy has been up 90 times and struck out almost 40 times. I mean, he strikes yeah, out a tremendous amount. I agree. As a fan, I'm just a big fan of these players that do exactly what you ask them to do, like right. a Tyler Austin, like right. a Torres. It's a shame to send him down. He's done. Well, Torres is a utility man, but 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 you have no choice. What are you going to do with him? You're going to tell me you don't want to bring Bird back? Ah. Uh. Did you watch? I wish there was a way we could platoon them. I, well, wish I don't think. I, I, I think them. you want to let Bird try to play every day. You know, maybe maybe sometime down the road that happens. Maybe you know, Austin doesn't go anywhere, and that and that happens. But right now, I think their feeling is that Bird can be an everyday player. That he can be a good everyday player. I mean, you saw him hit big home runs last year. At the, you saw him have great at bats in the postseason. You saw him have, you know, you saw him do some terrific things in the postseason. So I think, you know, they they have very high hopes. Now, if you want to tell me, hey, I'm not waiting for him anymore. He is too injury prone. That's a fair point. It's a very fair point. That's and, the thing. I, and he has I've got to prove that. he has got to prove that he can't that that can't happen. Another injury, and you know what? I'll come around to your side in that I it would be enough. I can't see another major injury right away. He has got to prove he can stay on the field. I totally agree with you. This is kind of getting to the point where it's you know uh, it's it's proved that you can stay on the field with him. And hey, I think Austin has earned himself a chance to stay in the major leagues. But I got a feeling it'll be with another team though. That's the only problem because I, he does not really have a role here. The DA spot is one that's not comfortable right now. You can't clog it up with what's going on with, with, with the catcher. And obviously with Stanton, you cannot, you really have got to keep the, uh, the DH open for these guys. They have got to have the ability to DH at least a decent amount of the time, the two of them. So from that standpoint, you don't have that open. But uh, Austin's bat, in terms of power, is, is impressive. I mean, a man has eight home runs and, what, 90-something bats? That's very impressive. No question about it. Rick and Danbury, what's up, Rick? Mike, I want to look at this differently because Bird's a given. Who would you think you'd rather have on the team or is more deserving at this point? Austin or uh, Neil Walker? I'd, I'd rather release Neil Walker no, and keep no, Austin. No, but Austin's, that's, but you're not going to pigeonhole Austin into a bench job. It's not what you're looking at him at this stage for. You'd rather use him as a chip in a trade than to make him into a bench player. Walker will, be, will come here, will sit on a bench, 
will work, wait for his opportunity, will play third, will play second, will play first, will pinch hit. He can do all that, and he's willing to play that role now. He's at that stage of his career. Austin is not at that stage of his career. He's, you know, he's not 32 going on 33. He's 26 years old. He wants a chance to play every day, and he's probably a guy who more likely is a chip in the trade than anything else. Yeah, I just, I just think it's a shame this kid has done what he's done and has to wind up back in the minors. It's, it, it's something just not right about it. I don't it. think he'd be an effective. First of all, he does not have multiple positions at, with any ability. Secondly, he does not, to me, have the ability to come off the bench and pinch hit like Walker does. All right, so you think he's more useful as a trade deadline? Change? I do. Unle- listen, unless Bird gets hurt again, well, then he's yeah. got, then he's got a job. Yeah. Now, if you want to say to me, Mike, I want to keep him around because I don't trust Bird, I I can't argue with that. Then stash him in the minors, and let's let Bird see if he can be healthy. So from that standpoint, but you don't want to turn Austin at 26 into a bench player. You don't want to do that. Walker is willing to play that role as he goes on 33 years old. He's willing to play that on a good team. He's willing to wait for his opportunities. He's willing to, you you know, he's a guy who... Obviously, you know, he's a switch hitter. He's better from one side. He can play three positions. He's proved he can, D- he's proved he can DH. He proved that he can pinch hit. To me, he's got a useful role and one he's willing to take. Mike in Bayside, what's up, Mike? Hey, Mike. You know, it's, just, it's kind of dawned on me this weekend. I'm watching the Mets. I'm watching all baseball games, even the Sunday night baseball game with Mike. I wonder what the game of baseball is becoming now. It's all strikeout, wait for the home run. Strikeout, strikeout, let's wait for the home run. And this is, I thought it was just me watching the Mets. I'm watching Sunday night baseball last night. The whole game. Strikeout, 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 wait for the home run. Even the Yankees, too. That is the game. I wonder why, it's kind of boring, though. In well, a that, way. that's game. what Very- the game has, that is what the game has become, Mike. It has become a game of strikeout. And wait for the power. That's, that's exactly what it's become. And you see an enormous number of strikeouts in these games. You know, there's just they've become commonplace. You don't see them move guys around except in late inning situations. You don't see you know hit and runs and stuff like that. I it mean, it's a, it's a it's a bygone era. So you're right. That has become. Look at the numbers. They're staggering in that regard. That's what it is. That's where the game is. Back after this.